Hey guys, Travis Kels here. I have a crazy story to share with you all today, one that I've never publicly talked about before. It's about the time that Taylor Swift blamed me for her miscarriage. Now, before I get into the details, I want to make it clear that this is an extremely personal and sensitive topic. I can't even imagine how difficult it must have been for Taylor to go through something like that. My heart goes out to her and anyone else who has had to endure the pain of pregnancy loss. I've thought a lot about whether I should even share this story, because it's not my place to talk about Taylor's private life. But the reason I ultimately decided to do this video is that I feel like there are a lot of misconceptions and rumors out there about what happened. And I want to set the record straight, from my perspective. So, it all started back in 2022. I had just won the Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs, and I was on top of the world. I felt unstoppable, you know? I was riding that championship high, feeling like I could do anything. And then, out of the blue, I get a call from Taylor Swift's people. They wanted to know if I'd be interested in collaborating on a song together. I was totally caught off guard, but of course I said yes. I mean, who wouldn't want to work with Taylor Swift? We set up a meeting at her studio in Nashville to discuss the project. And when I showed up, there was Taylor, sitting on the couch, looking absolutely stunning as usual. We exchanged pleasantries, and then she got right down to business. So, Travis, I have this idea for a song, she said. It's about a football player who has an affair and accidentally gets his. So, we got to work. I spent hours in the studio with Taylor, recording my parts and providing feedback on the production. It was a lot of hard work, but I have to say, I was really proud of how the song was coming together. A and D then, just a few weeks before the track was set to be released. Taylor called me with some devastating news. She had suffered a miscarriage. I was absolutely heartbroken for her. I couldn't even begin to imagine what she was going through. And of course, my first instinct was to reach out and offer my condolences. But when I called Taylor, the conversation did not go at all how I had expected. Travis, how could you do this to me? She screamed through the phone. I was completely blindsided. What are you talking about, Tay? I asked, confused. The song, Travis. The song about the football player who gets his girlfriend pregnant and then abandons her. This is all your fault. I felt my heart drop. Taylor, I I don't understand. How is this my fault? Don't play dumb with me. She yelled. Do you know exactly what you've done? Do you put this idea in my head, and now look what's happened. I lost my baby because of you. I was utterly speechless. I had no idea how to respond to such an accusation. I mean, how could she possibly blame me for her miscarriage? That made absolutely no sense. Taylor, I'm so sorry for your loss, but this has nothing to do with me or the song, I tried to explain. That's just a fictional story we were working on. It's not real life. The hell it's not real life. She shouted. You're the one who got me pregnant, and then you abandoned me. This is all your fault. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Taylor was completely unhinged, and there was no reasoning with her. All I could do was try to calm her down and assure her that I had nothing to do with her pregnancy or her miscarriage. Taylor, please, you have to believe me. I would never do something like that to you. I care about you, and I'm devastated that you're going through this. But I had nothing to do with it, I swear. But Taylor was having none of it. She continued to scream and yell, accusing me of betraying her and destroying her life. It was all I could do to keep from breaking down myself. Eventually, the call ended, and I was left feeling completely shaken. I couldn't believe that Taylor was putting this all on me. I mean, yes, the song we were working on did have some similarities to what she was going through. But it was just a fictional story it had nothing to do with real life. In the days and weeks that followed, the situation only got worse. Taylor went on a social media rampage, publicly blasting me and accusing me of being a deadbeat dad. She even went so far as to threaten legal action against me. I was completely blindsided by all of this. I had no idea how to handle it. I mean, how do you defend yourself against something like that, especially when the other person is a global superstar with millions of devoted fans? I tried to reach out to Taylor, to reason with her, to get her to understand that I had nothing to do with her pregnancy or her miscarriage. But she refused to listen. She was convinced that I had betrayed her, and there was nothing I could do to change her mind. And of course, the media caught wind of the whole thing. Soon, there were headlines all over the place, with people speculating about what really happened between me and Taylor. 
some were sympathetic, but others were quick to jump to conclusions, and vilify me. It was a nightmare, you guys. I felt like I was trapped in this inescapable PR disaster, and there was nothing I could do about it. I mean, how do you fight back against something like this when the whole world seems to be against you I'll admit, there were times when I just wanted to crawl into a hole and disappear. The stress and the anxiety of it all was just overwhelming. I had nightmares about Taylor showing up at my doorstep, screaming and yelling at me. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't focus on my football career, it was all I could think about. And to make matters worse, the song that we had been working on, the one that had sparked this whole mess, was put on hold indefinitely. Taylor refused to release it, and she made it clear that she wanted nothing to do with me, or the project anymore. I felt like I had lost everything my reputation, my career, and even my friendship with Taylor. It was all just crumbling around me, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. But through it all, I tried to maintain my composure and stay strong. I knew that the truth was on my side, and I was determined to clear my name, no matter what it took. I start and then, one day, I got a call from an unexpected source Taylor's own team. Apparently, they had started to realize that this whole situation had gotten completely out of hand, and they wanted to try to make things right. They reached out to me offering to set up a meeting with Taylor, to try to get to the bottom of everything. I was hesitant at first, but ultimately, I knew that this was my best chance to set the record straight. So, I agreed to the meeting, and a few days later, I found myself sitting across the table from Taylor Swift herself. It was tense, to say the least, but I was determined to keep my cool and get to the truth. And as it turned out, the truth was even more heartbreaking than I could have imagined. Taylor had been dealing with a lot of personal struggles, including some mental health issues, and the loss of her pregnancy had sent her into a tailspin. She admitted that she had been unfairly blaming me for her miscarriage, and that she knew deep down that it wasn't my fault. But in her grief and her anger, she had lashed out, and she had let her emotions get the better of her. I have to say, I was floored by her honesty and her vulnerability. I had expected her to be defensive and combative, but instead, she was open and remorseful. And that made it a lot easier for me to let go of my own anger and bitterness. We talked for hours, and by the end of the meeting, we had both come to a place of understanding and forgiveness. Taylor apologized profusely for the pain and the turmoil she had caused me, and I assured her that I harbored no ill will towards her. It was a difficult conversation, to be sure, but it was also a necessary one. And I think it ultimately brought us closer together, in a way. We were able to put the past behind us and move forward, with a newfound respect and appreciation for each other. And as for the song that it started it all, well, it